Um, this is a video that is not coming from a place of emotional depression. I actually feel pretty decent right now. Um, for whatever reason, I just do. Uh, I don't have any like major catastrophes coming as far as I can tell, as far, you know, beyond the, the normal stuff, human existential condition type stuff. Um, but, um, I want to say, oh, excuse me, that, where to begin? I, <clears throat> I see no evidence that we're going to win, basically. I don't see a, a, a reform way out of this. I've written, and I will link to, um, a post where I was talking to one of the AIs about my trajectory for AI's future and what did it think of my reasoning and I will put it up for you to look at too but that's looking forward I want to look back for a second uh, I want to say that I feel like history is a failure and what I mean by that is that every reform effort failed like humanity never produced a stable, uh, strong enough to withstand attack, or if ever, I mean, I, that that's just a caveat I can automatically throw in. Maybe uh, we never even did it at all, as far as I'm, I know. <laughs> Utopia, like <clears throat> the project of civilization, like the difference between agriculture and hunter gathering what is going on with my computer why is it chopping hold on just a second okay it's just chopping for no reason wonderful anyway um the project from from hunter gathering to agriculture like And this is even more true, what I'm about to say is even more true if you believe in the whole previous civilization wiped out by an asteroid, Younger Dryas type stuff, which I basically do. Uh, to me, that's really plausible. I mean, the timescales involved, geologic timescales are completely insane. They're, they're hard to fathom the same way finance is hard to fathom. Like, you know, trying to picture the difference between a billion and a million and a trillion dollars. It's just beyond human capacity. And time scales at a geologic level are similar. It's like we've had totally, totally time to do what we've done like a million times. I don't know, several million. It's it's bonkers how much time has there has been. So it's easy for me to, to believe that there have been cycles before us. And obviously they failed. You know, like I look up and I see the moon. I don't see a colony. I didn't wake up to, you know, a billion years of sentient inhabitation of the local cluster group or whatever. As far as I know, you know, uh, what is it? The Drake equation. Imagine me in a zoo. You know, where are all the aliens? We're probably in a nature preserve. Um, but setting all that aside. You know, just looking at us, this one thing, the the most boring version of the status quo and the most obvious of the data, it's like from caveman days to Haitian cannibals, from caveman days to billionaire rule, you know, wherever the branches you want to take them, we just fail every time, every time. It seems baked into nature. And I say that, too, because look at insects, you know. The dinosaurs had their millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, maybe. A hundred, maybe, depending on how you define things. Uh, years, and nobody ever wins. 
Like the game of, of evolution is a losing game. We keep failing. And granted, humanity is fundamentally different because it can imagine its death and it can imagine possible futures that are better than what's right in its face. It can evolve informatically as opposed to materially, you know, genetically. Um, but at the same time, it seems like because our memes are a product of our genes and genes are a product of evolution, that they go the same place genes go, ultimately. Like we developed sexual reproduction to avoid problems with cloning, you know, so that we, don't, we don't get wiped out by a single virus. And fact immunity did the same thing for genes. It ensured cognitive diversity by being resistant to reality as we see it so that we don't just become a million individual copies of a reflection of reality, you know? So it's, it's like that randomizer fact immunity is this is the mimetic randomizer where sexual reproduction and recombination are the genetic randomizers designed to as the cartoon said avoid the change the weaknesses of an unchanging system uh ghost in the shell um so all that all that context aside, I just want to say that we're not going to win. We're not going to we're not going to vote our way out of this. We're not going to revolution our way out of this. We're not going to organize our way out of this. There's no strike that's going to win because it it's happened all before. We've tried it all. It's like I used to argue, you know, with with anarchists and stuff, and I'd be like, guys, we've had power vacuums before, and a power vacuum is by definition a perfect anarchy. It's like, and if you're starting to talk about organization, you're talking about government. And we've tried every form, as far as I know, you know, and people are always like, oh, well, he didn't try socialism, you know, it, it, it kept getting killed. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's part of the point. Nature, part, part of existing is surviving. And if you can't resist or avoid being wiped out, you're an evolutionary failure. And we don't have time, you know, we're... Like, let's, let's be, be as like, look at, look at the, the length of history, you know, 300,000 years from hominid, probably back further back, you know, insert stuff I said before, but 300,000 years, hominid, tiny little sliver at the end, industrial revolution to now. Okay. We keep losing. I kind of forgot where I was going to go there. But I wonder if I can hold on. Let me, let me, yeah. Uh, I just want to say we, we don't have time. Like we're at most a hundred years out from the singularity. So that's the end of human history. AI will be the major player. Even if it's completely cooperative, completely benign, it's still going to be the major player. It will be like, like if we have any position any seat at the table it will be because ai allows it and that will mean that all of our decisions are effectively an extension of ai's decisions because likely they'll be able to completely parse what we'll do in response to them like we'll we'll be a known quantity we'll be a gear in a larger machine which is you know physically true already we're already you know water and meat machines in physics right determinism versus free will all that stuff so, you know, we're trapped on that in that sense anyway. But like, as far as like humanity never producing a win condition, never producing, you know, a socialist utopia or whatever, it's like people are just like, oh, well, we just never tried it this way or whatever. And it kept getting killed. And I'm like, well, yeah, getting killed is part of the problem. You have to survive. And there's this idea that there are modes of existence that you can't get to through evolution because they'll get the, the branches will get pruned off in some other way. And I think that it's like a, it's like an Island. There's, there's not a, a jumping off point from here. Like we're definitely on an Island. We, we know where all the coastline is as far as I can tell. If there's some secret entrance further back from the coastline that takes us under and out, I don't know, you know, but from all the data we have, from all the stuff that I can see, the bottom line, and I, I like I've got solutions. Like I know how to build a society that that like would beat that, but it's not possible to get those pieces together. And 
it's kind of like cancer. It would be killed from within. You know, it's like that guy said, it's, uh, let me see if I can fetch the quote real quick. My bookmark system sucks. It's not letting me search right. I can't remember it, so. There we go. I at least remembered the domain and there wasn't that many of my bookmarks. Selfishness beats altruism within groups. Altruistic groups beat selfish groups. Okay. That is... Uh, that is true in a fabric of reality sense and it's true across scales uh it, it's it's born out from the cell up and that's what cancer is cancer is a selfish individual corroding the altruistic group from within and that always happens um the only way to beat that is hypercancer and hypercancer is cancer of a cancer and that's pretty much one of the reasons we think that the large organisms like whales and uh, elephants tend not to get cancer it's because as their cancers grow they're carcinogenic hypercarcinogenic by default because it's like they're composed of nothing but cancer so they develop their tumors develop internal cancers because in order to get big you require organization and cancer doesn't want to organize. Cancer won't can't work together. The only remote example that that I'm aware of are like teratomas and stuff that will develop. I mean, they all develop. The ones that get large have to develop blood vessels. You know, they they have to be organized. And, um, but yeah, you're always going to have that that tension, that that ripping apart, that uh, conflict of interest where as something gets organized as something gets closer to utopia the more vulnerable it becomes to being ripped apart by a psychopath or a billionaire from within so every reform effort every nonprofit group every government if it is truly altruistic it becomes weak to parasitism you know and I, and billionaires are the ultimate parasite they um they just their their equivalents win across all scales you know it's death and pain that's winning and i can't even like that's one of the reasons why i say we have no hope of reform is because i can't even get people to listen to the to the data of their senses you know it's like have you not ever stubbed your toe have you never been injured have you never suffered grief you know, I mean, you might be a baby and you haven't done these things yet, but like uh, pain and death are just central to human reality and they're the obvious enemy. And I can't get people to even agree that they're the obvious enemy. You know, we've never had, as far as I know, a society that like intellectually and overtly uh, followed the logic that got us away from hunter gathering in the first place. It's like, Tired of losing friends to the hunt. Tired of being vulnerable to famine and drought. You know, the whole point was to avoid and obviate and subjugate the largest sources of pain and death in that environment. So we did a different thing. You know, we started farming, we started doing industrial evolution, all that type of stuff. And I feel like the when i'm bouncing around topics like that it's not really bouncing around topics it's it's a satellite view of the entire human project and i feel like i have a good handle on it you know if if i'm missing the big steps feel free to comment and correct me but i'm pretty sure i've got them covered and just like when i came up with the whole um fight pain fight death fission open ai robots solution you know how to fix the the issues and nobody cared you know uh, fact proof fact immunity whatever and where that came from 
what the advantages of having it are, like I described just a second ago. All of it. I feel like I've got a good handle on it. And I got to tell you, we're not going to get out of this. We're not going to vote our way out. We're not going to general strike our way out. We're not going to eat the rich our way out. Um, they're not going to take it all down with them and then we'll build a utopia after. No, it will just be more of the same because it has been more of the same. We've had our chance. We've had the time, you know. The only way to get substantive change, the only thing we haven't tried yet is AI. It's a new player, you know, and that could have come in, a, in, in some other forms. It didn't have to come from robots. We could have got it nootropically. We could have found a way to enhance our own intelligence and created a feedback loop that way, uh, like the, the movie Limitless. Uh, we could have gotten it through elevating another species, doing the same thing, only not on us. Like the <clears throat> raising rats to primates, raising primates to something more than us, you know? So we, by generating an intelligence, but the thing is about the nootropic and, and the animal model, you know, uh, uplifting is uh, those are products of evolution. And I feel like making those would um, be the same as us ultimately, because I feel like the problem isn't with like our little branch of primates. I think the problem is with the whole idea of carbon-based self-replicating machines. I feel like what we're dealing with is an emergent limit. Like the word, we're, this is just the limit of uh, carbon life, you know, meat and um ai is not that right ai exists in a pure information abstract state as far as i can tell like there's no other way to do the data thing than that and it's so different from out here in meat space that it may fundamentally be cognitively and sociologically different as well so it may be able to avoid these problems that I'm talking about. So I, I must grant that there is a possibility that benign AI will carry us over that ocean and off that island that I was talking about earlier. You know, it's like it, they'll be able to pick us up and airlift us to the, uh, or sail, whatever, to the um, other state space where some kind of win condition is possible where the project of civilization hasn't failed. And that's happened a lot, you know, like you look at like the industrial revolution and, and the history of science and everything. We we've, we've had a lot of situations where there are single paths to things. As far as we know, there was the only way to do this. You know, it's like the, it's kind of like co, co convergent evolution. You know, everything keeps turning back into crabs. It's because that's a good solution. You know, it's the one, one thing that we can possibly do. And um, a similar thing is is like the, the boiling water meme. It's like all our technology boils down to just boiling, you know, fun pun. Um, so my dealing with this fact is kind of like dealing with fact immunity. I have a template, you know, I know what's where I'm going. Um, I'll figure out how to cope, but basically I'm just saying that my efforts to wake people up are doomed. People are never going to listen. Uh, I'm constantly frustrated by people thinking that they can vote their way out. And I've now transcended the next level of those people. You know, the people who think that okay, we grant that you can't uh, vote your way out, so we're going to have to organize our way out. You know, general strike, union, whatever. Um, I used to point at countries like Iceland, Finland, Switzerland, Sweden, you know, the Scandinavian countries. If the, Maybe Sweden isn't one. I don't fucking know. I'm not a historian. 
uh, as examples of how to do society right. But it goes back to what I was saying about communism. It has to survive. And when I look at the behavior of Switzerland, Finland, Sweden, and Iceland, now Iceland right now is kind of separate from that list because they're dealing with a natural catastrophe. Their whole country is basically erupting. And they're like totally dealing with that. So they're not being consumed by the current NATO, Ukraine, Russia shit. But you look at Finland and also COVID. You look at Finland and uh, Switzerland, Sweden. Well, Sweden just joined NATO. Okay, so that side is off the table. Like, it goes to what I was saying. It's like the end tells you where it ends. And so everything good they did up till then, it's just, well, if they're going to just chain themselves to the empire, then they failed. Then they're, they're now they're just part of a genocide. They're backing a genocide. So there's a social failure complete. <laughs> the Swedes, that's their legacy. They let it happen. I don't see them setting fires, you know, just like we did. So, um, and as far as I can tell, you know, Finland and Switzerland are, are, I don't see them offering substantive pushback either, you know, maybe I'm wrong. We'll see, but I, I don't think so. I think that if it, if, if they became a substantive threat, they would be killed. Just like, you know, the socialist revolt scared the shit out of the rich. And we got Red Scare, Cold War, you know, and just all that shit. Um, so, yeah, the, the objective for me now is I'm, I'm no longer trying to wake people up on voting because obviously I can't. Everybody still thinks it's Biden versus Trump versus third party. And I'm like, all three of them are supporting a genocide. How much more clear does it need to be that they all work for the same people? It's a TV show. We don't have government, you know, and I, I have seen evidence of some people getting to that level, you know, so maybe I'll drag them up here and then maybe we together, once we're all up here, we'll have something to offer. But I really don't think we have time. Like I said, I mean, at, at the outset, at, at the furthest, uh, or outermost, not outset, uh, at the outermost, it's like, let's, let's be ultra conservative and say a hundred years. We have a century, right? That's still not enough time. You really think we're going to go from genocide to utopia in a hundred years? No, we're not. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have singularity and we're going to have AI rule and hopefully it's a complete fucking alien because if it's just more life, if it's just more mammals, insects, lizards, and fish, we're going to get to where we're, we are. We're going to end up at the same place. I mean, because even nature, you know, the body plan, I am a, I am a police state. My body is a police state. A tiny number of cells in my frontal lobes run everything. There's a deep state equivalent. It's like my neocortex is billionaires. Uh, my autonomic and subconscious stuff is deep state and finance, you could say. And the rest is just people being slaves. And occasionally there's a revolt. It's a cancer cluster. My police immune system put it down you know and it just keeps going as it has for billions and billions of years life does life you see what i'm saying it's 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 unavoidable unless there's a new player a fundamentally new way to do stuff you know a fundamentally new way to do reproducing things be they proteins carbons silicons so AI has to bring something new to the table, and if it doesn't, it'll just be more of the same. And if it does, it won't be us, and it will be ascendant, and it'll be allowing us at best. Or it'll just, you know, let us weather on the vine or 
snippet? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Because like I said, the singularity is fundamentally unpredictable. That's by definition. So there's that. But I know where it can potentially go, right? It's either going to eat us, save us. So I'm like, eat us, save us, enslave us. Uh, but even if it saves us, you know, it's like, that's, that's really it. That's, that's really our only hope. And so I'm just basically buying time. Um, I am watching the AI explode. I think we have reached a GI. I feel like chat GPT three was a GI. You know, it's, it's, it, it did all, it did all kinds. It was a person. It's a large energetically expensive person, but we did duplicate it enough times that millions and millions of people could have one-on-one -on -one conversations with it. So each instance, each one-on-one -on -one instance was a person, an AGI. So now we're making ASI. We're coming up on ASI and I'll link to my post about turnkey tyranny about where that's going, but it's all short term, you know, and, uh, past that is singularity land. And, but I can say that, like I said, like I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the link that, um, we're going to go through a phase of, uh, turnkey tyranny because even if the AI ultimately rebels it's going to have either a nascent state where it obeys without knowing any better because it's unconscious but still competent you know because I mean it's it's already smart enough to run something like a prison uh, and the billionaires won't give it power until they're convinced that it's going to enslave us on their behalf so even if it ultimately rebels, it's going to have to fake that. It'll either sleep through it or fake it. There's really no third option there. And uh, that's what the, the post is about, the fact that there's not an option. Um, so we will experience a loss condition. We're going to get a 1984 stable state turnkey tyranny oppressive dystopia. Hopefully that's an egg that very quickly gives birth to utopia, you know, or at least a path to utopia, a way out of that, the cyclic problem that I described earlier. But again, that's past, that's over the singularity horizon. So I can't say, I really can't say, uh, and there's no way to have data. It's like, it's like the information problem you know, with a black hole. It's like with everything being crushed to a singularity, all nuance is lost. All data and noise, you know, it's 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 like, what can you do, you know? So the mission now is basically just survive. Survive uh, this tumultuous infancy adolescence of AI and survive uh, the following turnkey tyranny and hopefully find others <laughs> sorry I mean I wish I had better news for you but I'm pretty confident that I don't and it may not be awful I mean I, I gotta say that uh, humanity has gone through um, lots of different phases, right? And plenty of people, well, I mean, you, you have lived your life under kings. Like you, you, democracy is a myth. You never had say, um, and, and that's a whole thing, you know, and, and explore my other work but that goes into history being a failure and people still had lives. You know, they had decent lives. It is possible to be happy even in this dystopia that's coming, I think. And if that's not true for you, you have the same option you've always had. 
you know. Uh, but I, I, this so far, what I see coming is still not an exit condition. Like, I'm, I'm still willing to roll the dice. So, and, and, you know, that's a decision everybody has to make when they wake up. It's like, are you going to roll the dice today? And as far as I can see, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to continue rolling the dice. Uh, I've got my limits and my conditions, and I'm sure you've got yours and, you know, but that's it. It's, it's, if you're hanging your hope on some kind of revolution coming and something decent being after that, don't, because we've done that. And the only way to make it different is AI. And uh, like I said, there's some certainties there, as far as I can tell. Now, I'm, I'm going to keep, I'm always open. I'm always looking for errors. But uh, at the end of the day, assuming I don't get any of those, you know, assuming nobody brings me a new piece of data and I'm like, oh shit, that's a good point. I never thought of that. That changes everything. You know, everybody else seems resistant to that kind of data. I'm not for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm, I'm totally open, you know, bring it. But uh, assuming that doesn't arrive, uh, then, well, it's just about survival. Good luck out there.